This is part two of a two-part series on the UCO Candelier and how to use this for heating a small space like a car camper, SUV camper, van camper. And in the first video, I go over the product, talk about how it comes out of the box, the candles, and heating it with the candles and actually testing it out in my SUV. And I'll, in that video, it gives you all the specs and how well it did at heating. So in this video, what I'm doing is I'm converting this candle heater to an oil burner heater. So the first thing you're going to need is a hammer. Good to have a pair of scissors. This is something I just purchased at my local Walmart. You just need a very small finish nail. It doesn't have to be perfect, but a small nail. This one also came with some thumbtacks, which came in handy later. You don't have to have a small pair of pliers, but this is going to make life a whole lot more helpful for threading the wick and for raising and lowering the wick when, it, when it's hot, when the cap's hot. I went ahead and I got a couple of these little pill bottles from Walmart. These are going to store my storage caps. So these are the caps that, that have the liner in them and we'll be able to put these on our burners to make sure they don't spill when they're being stored. And we'll also put the wicks in there. Next is we'll go over the oil. Um, you can actually use straight kerosene in these burners, but it's a really bad idea. And it'll only cost you about five cents or less to fill the burner. But the reason it's a really bad idea is there is some smell and they are prone to smoking. So this is the best oil that I could find and I'm really happy with it it's by Firefly. And it's clean burning, odorless, sootless, no additives for indoor and outdoor use. So as long as you have the wick at a reasonable height, it's not going to make so, uh, soot, it's not going to make smoke. And I haven't, I don't smell any smell but some people might so this is the 32 ounce bottle it comes with this great little filler which is very helpful so in order to make this cost effective you want to buy this by the gallon and then I pour this into that and then that into the bottles so next is finding the right bottle now this was a little tricky because most of these bottles this is either plastic or this is plastic so I went to my local supply store and this is what I found this was the only one they had this way it needs to be tall and skinny. If you just want to do three burners, you could do one that's a little chubbier. Um, but I like this size. This has to be glass. This has to be metal because it gets pretty hot from here to here. It's going to be hot. It's usually always nice and cool to the touch to this bottom part here. Next thing you want to do is soak off the label because the label is going to get in the way of seeing where the oil height is. So once you soak off the label, you're going to end up with a shot bottle that looks like this. So I'm going to take the cap here. Take this cap off, and for the burner cap, we have to remove this piece of uh, this piece of plastic in here, which makes it uh, so it doesn't spill. So we have to pop that off because that would melt. So we're going to pop that off by taking one of our nails and pulling it out. So here I've just got a finished nail. I'm going to jab it in there, get a hold of it, and pop that out. We won't be using this to so set it aside. So now we have the cap. Now if you notice the cap has a bit of a dome on it. We don't want that. We want it to be dished so that it keeps any type of oil nice and low. So the first thing we need to do though is we need to make a hole for the wick to come out. So we're going to put it this way because we want the teeth sticking out down. Put it right in the center and then what you're going to do is take your hammer on a wood surface or something you don't mind getting a hole in and we're just going to tap this down and put a hole in it. So the nail is all the way through and if you notice real close that you'll have these teeth sticking up and that's going to help keep the wick from going back down so we can take our nail out. Now you got to poke the hole first because if you don't in this next step it won't make the right shape. So I found the uh, so I want to I want to push this down. So I found the perfect thing to use was the end of this lighter. It's open. So what I did is I just set it right over our new hole and just gave it a couple light taps with the hammer. And what you'll see is that now it's dished so that any type of oil will stay in there. If you don't poke the hole first, when you put the lid back on, the top will just pop back up. But now that'll stay that way. So the next thing we got to do is the wick. And the wick is very important. I forgot to go over that. Went through a lot of different wicks. I tried regular wicks. It did not work. So this is what I end up and I was very happy with this and it's extremely expensive. It's just a couple bucks for a whole lot of material. Now it has to be 100% cotton. 
This is not a yarn. It's not a string. It's something kind of in between. And I'll put a link on my website to this. You can buy this off Amazon. It has to, it's called Worsted. Worsted, and it doesn't say a name. Four ply, 2.5 ounce. And that's a great way to search for it is the 2.5 ounce. If you put Worsted 2.5 ounce, you'll find it. This allows it because we have to go up against a good bit of gravity here. So when the oil gets low, it's got to draw it all the way up here. So you don't want a wick that's too tough and you don't want the yarn, which is too light. So I found this was a really great balance. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off a section of this and I'm gonna want quite a bit of it. And the reason I'm gonna want quite a bit is you don't wanna to have to go push the wick back down because you're going to have to pull it out, take off the cap, it's going to be hot, all that. So what you want to do is have a whole lot of wick available so that all you need to do is just pull it up and then you can take a pair of scissors and cut it to height. That way you don't have to take the cap off. So I'm going to take quite a bit of this here and we're going to double the string. So we'll cut this off. And the only tricky bit about this whole thing is threading this through the cap. I'm going to take this to equal length. Sometimes you hit it right off, sometimes the string doesn't cooperate and you end up having to do it all over again. So here's the tricky bit. It's just kind of just got to work with it. So I put the loop here and what I want to do is I'm going to use the nail and try to push part of that loop into that hole. And again, this just takes some patience. Okay, there, I got a little bit coming through. I'm still holding the nail. Then I'm getting my great little pair of pliers, grab a hold of it and just twist it. Uh, it's not cooperating, let's see there. Let's see if I can get a hold of it now. Try and get a hold of it and pull. You wanna get the whole string, not just part of it. And that's where sometimes it's hit or miss. Okay, this time I got lucky and I got the whole string. There isn't any bunched up underneath here. So pull it up to a decent height. We're gonna cut it off and that gives us a whole bunch here. So the cost to make one of these bottles is very minimal. The yarn is really inexpensive. The bottle and cap ran me um, $2. And no, what comes in it does not burn. And yes, I did try it. <laughs> so make sure you dump it out and make sure you let it dry. So there we have it. Put that on there. And you can see the strings kind of all wound up in there, but it'll settle down in there. You can open it up and you can just let this lay on the side. Pop this great squeeze top off. If you fill it all the way up, you're going to have an abnormally... Um, the, the flame's going to be taller than what it's really going to be because as you get a little bit of gravity in it, the flame's going to settle down. So I just found it's easier not to fill it all the way to the top. Just get it to the beginning of the neck. All right. Now I'm going to show you a very strange problem I ran into at this point. And if you're not careful, you're going to run into it at this point yourself. So what happens is you've got, you can also spin this around to get it to go down. This is a very tight fit right in here, very tight. And what happens is if you light it without putting a vent hole, initially there's going to be vapor lock and it's not going to be much flame. And then all of a sudden the cap's going to heat up. It's going to heat up this airspace and it's going to push a whole lot of oil up here and you're going to get a flame about this big. So to avoid that, I learned the hard way, was to just poke a very small vent hole. So in this came, I mentioned before, it came with a thumbtack which worked out perfect. So I'm going to take the thumbtack, ouch, try not to get stabbed, and somewhere along the side, still within the dish, I'm just going to reach in here, maybe about here, I'm just going to pop it through the cap. Good. So that's going to make our vent so we're not going to have any vapor problems. So this is what you're going to end up with. You've got a nice dish top. The vent is inside the dish. Now we need to wet the wick, which is pretty easy. Put your finger over both holes. Give it a little shake. That'll wet the wick. Now, this is where you get to decide how much fuel you want to use how much time you want it to burn. Now initially, since it's a full bottle, I'm gonna to have to cut it very, very low. So, well, what I'll do is I'll cut a little high because you can see how not to do it. So just cut it off there. Now that doesn't look very tall, but once we light it, and I'm gonna drop the lights here. 
So I'm going to light it now. And this is going to be too tall. The way you're going to know it's too tall is it's making smoke. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it's making a little smoke. If you see the flame doing a lot of that, like it's doing right there, it's going to smoke. Now it doesn't smell, but it does smoke. So that flame is way too high. It's not going to burn for terribly long like that. So what you have to do is cut it way down. So I'm going to blow it out. Then I'm going to come back and cut it almost just barely above the cap. There's almost none sticking out. Okay, you can see there's not a lot there. Now what will happen is as it gets down to about a third, what I can do is while it's still hot, I can just take this and I can bump the flame up a little bit. So if I want a higher flame or if you just want it to die down as the night goes, that's fine. And it's fine to run these dry. It'll, it'll run all, almost all the way out and then it'll just run out a uh, fuel up here and it'll just go out. So that's another great thing over candles is you don't want to run that candle all the way down. This you can run all the way down, it's no problem. It'll char the wick, but you just pull it up. And I, I would pull the wick up, cut the top off every use because you've got, as you can see, plenty of wick. So let's check to see what a good height would be. I'm going to let that burn for a minute. I think that flame is actually a little small, but you'll see it's not smoking and it's not flickering. So what's easy to do. I can just reach in here, pull it up a little, and then I can get the flame about where I want it. I want to kind of make the flame bigger than the UCO candles. So the next step is gluing them together. And you can choose whether you want to do three, but in this case, um, mine will actually hold four of these type bottles. Now all the shot bottles are 50 milliliters or 1.68 ounces. Um, so even though they, they look like some are bigger than other, they're all actually the same volume. So you won't get any more or any less with a different bottle. Um, so I um, decided to go with four burners. And after the previous test, that was a good choice. So we're going to glue these bottles together. Now I like using the Gorilla Glue hot sticks. I've had very, very good luck with these. And they stick extremely well to glass. So what I did is I would just put a spot here and a spot here and glue two together do the same thing on the other two and then take that pair glue 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 make sure you're on a good flat surface a tile table is not the best and so you'll have something that looks like this when you're all done and these are a little burned only because I have been using these for about three weeks testing them and so it hasn't burned through the cap. It's just there's a copper coloring on there. And uh, that tends to get discolored. So they don't burn. They just kind of lose that coloring. This one here, I've scratched up a lot just trying all the sorts of different wicks. So I found that the doubled wick works best. Three, uh, four layers of wick was impossible to control the flame. It was always too big. One strand burned for a very long time. But when the level got down about this level, the flame was just tiny. So I found that just that the double string works the best. So this is glued very solid together. And the next step is to get it set up in the lantern. So we're going to take our base, take these off, and the little springs just come out. Sometimes you have to pop the strings off the base, like this one. Just give it a little tug down here. They're just held in with around those three little nubs, and they'll come off save all your parts because you'll be able to convert this back whenever you want. The glue does stick very well to this and the bottle, um, but I don't put a lot of glue on because I've already put it on and taken it off and you can see there's no long-term damage to it so you can convert back and forth. So I'm going to put some glue under here, put some glue under this one. I'm just going to set the glass down in it and I'm going to at this point make sure it's about centered. I'm going to hold that there and let it dry. And I'm going to turn around and then I'm just going to put a couple dabs of glue right in here and right in here. So this way, when I want to, if I want to put it back to candles, I can break this off and it should come off fairly easily. Don't do this at home. I just want, I'm just doing this so you can kind of see how they react when they are bumped and that you can see how solid this is. All right. So here's my fire extinguisher. Here's the shake test, and then I'll light it up and show you. So you can see they can even hit and go to this angle. Uh, 
All right. So we'll say this is hanging. And you can see, you can smack it, you can swing it, and you can see the fluid does not really move much. So if you happen to hit it with your head, if it happens to hit a pretty hard swing, everything looks pretty good there. So don't do that. I just wanted you to see how solid it is. Come over here. We'll take this one that we just built and I'm going to glue that into the bottom of this cap. So I got it all glued in. And tonight, this is gonna be my backup heater. So I had three candles last night and you just the fourth candle. I'd like to be a little bit warmer. So now I've got four burners running over there and if we can still come up short, I've got a fifth one. So check this one go in here. Now what I'm hoping is when it's not too cold that I could get away in the Prius with just using this one. So I did want to talk about long-term storage and I came up with these little pill bottles so I have four new caps that still have the liner in them so that they won't leak. And then what I'll do is I'll take off each one of these and even though it's still wet, I'm just going to put it in here and I've got two of these so I'll probably just put two of these in each one Then you can just put them in here. I'm going to go pull the other two off. I've got two of those in each pill box. Now I'll take the four good caps that have the liners in them and I'll just put them on here. And then it can be stored. And if it falls over, then it'll be okay. So for storage, now you can store that. You can store it on its side any way you want. And you're not going to have any leakage. And then when you're ready to set it up, open it back up swap them back out. It's a fun little storage idea. It's now two weeks later and I've been trying to do the tests in the camper um, but the first week after filming uh, the temperatures have been down going down to zero in the single digits and that's just too cold and then when that broke the temperatures are now down in the 45 range at night so I haven't had a comparable night to run this test so we can compare it to the previous video with the candles but what I have done is I have run a burn test and here's the results of this what I did is I lit this and let it run for nine hours and I put the wicks at various heights and so here is the results of that test so this is nine hours this wick was a little higher and you can see where that is and this one was a little lower but you can see after nine hours of burning I had them starting up around here that there's this much left so there's at least another hour to two hours in there so I'd say you can get a good burn time from 10 to 11 hours maybe a little more this is the height as you can see the flame drops down a little bit as the fuel gets lower and it has to come up from the gravity that the flames do get a little bit lower and what i do have is um when i get a chance to run the test when i can get some similar situations i'll do the test and have to post that in a later video now if you've stuck around this long i have something special for you i had a special request from a subscriber in the united kingdom and he asked me if I would do a video on building a Prius home theater. And I think that is a fantastic idea. So I have taken on the challenge and already started on the project. This is a video projector. It's very tiny, runs on five volts, and it is made by AXA. And here's the box here. It's a 720p native resolution. There's the battery life, and so I'm working on the project right now, and that'll be the next one. So I'll have to fit the home theater to the Rover, and then when I get the, um, when I get the Prius back in about five weeks, I will fit the home theater to the Prius. So that's an exciting new project. I hope you stick around and get to see that. And, and thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found it helpful. And thank you for subscribing and for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.